I finally got my unusually large hands on a pair of Line Audio CM4 mics. We're gonna test them out, see what all the fuss is about. But we'll get into all that, plus all the nerdy stuff coming right up. So, good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Billy Madison. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified of new content right when it drops. Cheers. The Line Audio Design CM4 Cardioid Small Diaphragm Condenser Mics. Little. Black. Different. In the field recording community, these are one of the top suggestions for affordable small cardioid mics. These mics seem to come up almost daily in posts from all over the world. When I say affordable, I'm talking mic addict affordable. In no way is anything worth having in the audio world affordable by regular mortal standards. Affordable is a $3 Happy Meal. Affordable in the audio world is a mic that's less than $1,000. We are horrible, horrible people. Thankfully, the CM4s are not $1,000. Nowhere close. I'll break it down for you a little later, but first... What even is a Line Audio? Line Audio Design is a very small audio company located in Sweden. It's run by one man who personally makes these mics and other audio gear himself in his workshop. His name is Roger Johnson. He started Line Audio Design back in 1989, which was Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade, and Back to the Future ago. When you order a mic from Line Audio Design, you're getting the real deal. A handmade microphone by an old Swedish man. Is there anything better? No, there's not. They're virtually custom, and as such, shipping time may not be able to compete with the likes of Amazon. It's very stock dependent, but he keeps working away making these awesome little mics every day. If there's anything I truly love doing on my channel, it's bringing attention to the little guys making great things by hand. Line Audio Design makes some other great mics too. The Line Audio OM1 is an Omni mic that I'd like to try out in the future. And also the 4M and 8M mic preamps, which are not currently in production. The CM4 is the second incarnation of the SDC small diaphragm condenser cardioid mic. It was formerly known as the CM3, and that's the mic that made Line Audio famous. From what I've learned, there was a certain critical capsule part that became unavailable in order to continue to make the CM3 to spec. So Roger redesigned it and launched the CM4 as a replacement. The difference between the CM4 and the CM3 are almost negligible, but I'm told the CM4 has much more of a traditional, tighter cardioid pickup beam than the CM3. This guy right here that I've left in shot, so you can see the tip of it right here, is one of the CM4s. It has an impressively flat linear frequency response, which I'm personally very fond of because there's almost no coloration to the sound at all. Don't get me wrong, certain colorations in a mic is sometimes very desirable for many applications, but for an all-around, all-purpose SDC, especially for field recording, flat is king. Enough of my giant face head. Let's have a closer look at it. Here's the package. I love how this mic comes. Each mic comes with its own little plastic box. The front has the Line Audio Design CM4 sticker, and the back has all the information on the mic that you'd ever want to know, like the 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz frequency response, to the 100 ohm impedance, a frequency response chart, and more. Inside the box is high impact foam cutouts for the mic, the mic clip, and the pop filter. The mic itself is so small. It's a great looking product. Simple yet elegant design. Roger does pro work. It's an all metal design, and it has an XLR connection and requires phantom power to run. There are no buttons or switches on the body, just the mic. When you put the pop filter on, it covers most of the mic. Adorbs. The box definitely weighs more than the mic itself. The box without the mic clip and pop filter weighs 37 grams. The mic weighs 31 grams. The entire kit together weighs 97 grams. These are great to throw in a bag and take anywhere without bulky gear weighing you down. 
it measures. Oh, hold on a second. Let me just find my trusty old measuring tape here. <laughs> you know, this measuring tape was manufactured in a faraway land a long time ago by a holy man they called the Jewel of the Nile. I picked it up in North Africa in 85. <laughs> the mic is three inches long and three quarters of an inch in diameter. Just for shirts and stiffens, the box is 4.5 inches long, three and a quarter inches wide, and just over an inch thick. So, how does the CM4 sound? Well, what do you think? Every single bit of audio you've heard so far has been recorded using a single CM4. Well, how about on a piece of shit acoustic guitar that I still use because I spend all my money on mics? Let's listen. <laughs> How about some ambience recording? Blah, 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 blah. Test, 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 test. One, two. Testing. Blah, 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 blah. What are you doing? I'm oh, just doing some field recording. But field recording? Wh why? Because I can't do it outside. It's too cold. Really cold, actually. All right, that, that's really too noisy. Put it away. Put what away? Seriously, put it away. Yeah. Put what? Good. Test, 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 test. Test, test, test. What are you doing? What are you doing now? <laughs> Testing it with with this? Okay. All right. Good enough. Good, good. Put it away. Why? We're good. I think that's a good test Why? now. People are okay, sleeping. Fine, Jeez. fine, fine. Now what are you doing? What's, 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 what's Holy doing crap. the egg? Doing the, doing the egg thing. Okay, that's okay. enough. It's a good test. Everybody, good okay. test. Good. Good test. Bye. Comparison time. Okay, so now you're listening to the sound of the Slate ML2 small diaphragm condenser mic. And um, I have no emulations. This is just straight flat Slate ML2. And this is the comparison. Okay, so now you're hearing the sound of the Octava MK012 with the hypercardioid capsule on here. Um, and this is what this sounds like in comparison. Okay, so now you're hearing the audio of the Sennheiser MKH416, which I've put right here. I know that it's a totally uh, different mic. It's a shotgun mic, uh, but I wanted to put it in there anyway, just to see what you guys thought of the difference in sound. So this is the sound of the MKH416 by Sennheiser. This is a $1,000 microphone. And here is the Line Audio CM4 once again, out, out. Brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. To see the poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage. Then his head no more. Tis a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury. Signifying nothing. Okay, so now let's do an axis test. Uh, and also hand-holding it. That's a, that's a lot of handling noise. So be aware of that um, it's very susceptible as all small diaphragm condensers are to uh, plosives so always good to have a pop filter like I'm about to pull out Ooh, hear that all right what does it sound like as I go around 
the body. Testing one two one two one two one two. Ooh, that's not bad. Look, look. I mean, this is that's actually not bad. The uh, test one two one two one two one two one two, and now we're at exactly ninety degrees. So I'm perpendicular to my mouth hole, and now we're going to go all the way around, and now we're talking into the back of it, and then back to the side again at ninety. And let's move around as I'm talking, and you can hear it getting back into focus as I'm talking. One, two, three, four. This is not bad. Oh, not bad, not bad, not bad. The handling noise is very loud, though, so make sure you mount that as I have here. I've got, uh, I've got this um, Rycoat um, pistol grip. I've got this Rycoat pistol grip uh, shock mount. Yeah, so it's still really susceptible. If I was to use this for something, you know, like singing or something like that, I would definitely use something like a Stedman Pro Screen over top and probably the filter as well. But uh, to each his own. Anyway, that's the sound of this guy. And let's go back to the video. I had a chance to try out the CM4 on Shirley Temple behind the scenes of The Littlest Rebel back in 1935. She was a very busy but professional child. That much I can tell you. She would only let me interview her while she called her agent at the exact same time. I was attempting to say funny words like snarfleflot while she was on the phone. She laughed. Of course, I had no credentials, and I was promptly escorted out of there moments after this photo was taken. Here's some of that audio, by the way. Say, Shirley, how'd you like that trip to Bermuda you recently took with your family? I had a very good time in Bermuda with the horse and buggy, but I'm glad to be home. Here's a fun fact. Recorded audio was actually perfectly clean and clear back in the old days. It's the people themselves that had distorted voices. A lot of people don't know that. So earlier I said that affordable mics are not an actual thing when mere mortals are making that judgment. Mortals like wives or husbands or partners. So let's just see how affordable these are. You can get your very own Line Audio Design CM4 not for a thousand US dollars, but for 1,300 Swedish krona, which converts to around 125 US dollars each. You gotta admit, a buck twenty-five is uh, closer to mortal pricing than the huge. You can buy one or more CM4s by going to www.lineaudio.se and following the purchasing instructions therein. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. So what do you think of the Line Audio Design CM4? Let me know in the comments. As for me, it's time for... Analysis! Fantastic, Mike. I really love the sound of these. They're small and flat and light and awesome sounding. For me, the cons are pretty non-existent. It does have some handling noise issues due to the thin metal body, but who's going to be holding it in their hands while recording? Not me. That's who's not going to be hand handling it. The self noise is decent, but it's there. Mostly because you need a little more gain to run these than other small diaphragm condenser mics. Like right now on the Mix Pre, I'm running it at, let's check, 50 decibels of gain. And I'm pretty, I'm really close. I'm a good, I'm a good, just, just a little under a foot away from the mic right now. So uh, it needs a bit more gain than other mics. But if you're running quiet preamps like the Sound Devices Mix Pre, then it's no problem. Um, here's the sound of the noise. And the room. The rest of this video is a testament to all the super wicked awesomeness that this mic possesses. Do I recommend the Line Audio Design CM4? 100% yes. Hats off to Roger. A great product at a great price. Thanks, buddy. So concludes this chapter of the Time Preservation Society. And it's too damn hot for a penguin to be just walking around here. I gotta send him back to the South Pole. Bye now. And transmission. You're supposed to focus on the hand. 
That's a good, that's a good main focus. Pointing at you, the viewer. Watch these. Watch them. 